Alex Sidorenko, thank you for joining me today. I'm excited about this new course that you've developed for us. Um, we've done this with Risk Academy, and we've already had a number of people go through it and given it really high marks. So I'm hoping the audience sees this, understands the value in what you're doing, and joins in. So let me ask you, because our conversations go back a ways, when you were thinking about this program, who did you design this course for? Who's the who's the general audience that you think will benefit most? Um, thanks, David, and thanks to everyone watching. Well, so I, I have I've ha I have had this idea for quite a while that at some stage in every risk professional's career, um, you kind of you, you come to a point where you've done everything by the book. But yet you still get asked those questions. Well, so where is the value? You know, what, what what does risk management add to the business bottom line? And um, probably the most common question uh, people ask me is, well, how do you measure or prove or justify or validate the benefit or the value of, of risk management? And I thought, well, why don't now, we put together a course of case studies that showed how you can actually get value before waiting for the kind of for this holy grail of ERM or complete risk management. And uh, um, I, I can I, I call it uh, winning small while kind of aiming for the for the, for the big. Your end game may be to create the best risk governance in the organization. Your end game may be to create this uh, world-class risk management. Um, but there's nothing stopping you from achieving local wins in specific business decisions, in improving investment decisions, improving insurance purchasing decisions, and improving um, specific, very narrow decisions within uh, procurement, like vendor accreditation or tender selection, for example, through the lens of uh, of risk. So I've designed this course essentially for people that are um, wanting to see and experience and learn from some of those very specific kind of pockets of risk application, or specifically quantitative risk analysis application mm -hmm. that generates um, tangible, not hypothetical benefits of better governance, but like saves actual money to the bottom line that is evident to the, uh, to, to the shareholders. So this course is designed, I think for everyone, both on the, on the board side kind of wanting to push for these changes, become the agents of change, and on the risk management professional side, wanting to showcase something to kind of to build this business case for the risk management, improved risk management. Um, because, and I'll, I know this is a very long answer to, to a simple question, um, but one of, the, one of the kind of challenges risk professionals have is this constant lack of budget and, mm. and i think this uh, this course is really designed to show that risk management should and does pay for itself and in fact it pays for itself so handsomely that you really shouldn't be having large debates and build business cases around like for example risk management software or expanding your team if you need an extra quant that should be a very very simple communicate conversation with the cfo because it, you, you you should be able to immediately show how it literally pays for like the, the risk analysis that the person does literally literally pays for his person's this person's salaries and bonuses for like for the next 10 years in almost a month so this was kind of this was the uh, original idea behind the course and the course audience and you know in my experience in my career i built risk management programs at three different companies each time it was new and so it was new for management it was new for everyone in the organization and you mentioned getting small wins and i can tell you exactly that the truth is what you've just said as soon as you get those small wins, then people recognize that there's some value you're bringing to the table. But getting to that other point that you had just made, I've often said to people, the return on investment in risk management dwarfs the cost. And it's really just a matter of understanding where those things come from, because in some cases, they're a bit abstract. They're the general trustworthiness of your organization. But one of the things I love in your program, and the people who've gone through it so far have highlighted this as their favorite part of the program is these case studies or are the case studies that you mentioned 
that show really direct cost savings or really direct value creation, as you said, it offsets the cost of the department by multiples. I think you'd said um, just even a couple of months, uh, you can save the entire cost for a year. Um, so I think that's a really strong case to make for anyone who's out there trying to put a risk program in place and to gain the traction. So let's think a little bit about a board member's perspective, because one board member we've had go through this wants their entire audit and risk committee to go through your program because they found it so compelling, particularly that there are these tangible elements. What are some of the key takeaways that people are going to have from this program if they go through it? Um, th that's that's actually a really good uh, that's a really good question. Um, one of the I think one of the first uh, takeaways, and I'll I'll try and break it up into three. Um, the the first one is challenging the status quo of risk management a little bit. And I think um, I, I've tried in the course kind of to give the audience, the board members, the risk professionals, a bit of a reality check, because a lot of the techniques and practices that are so commonplace um, in risk management that I would consider them risk management artifacts <laughs> have been scientifically proven to not just make things better, but actually significantly negatively impact the quality of decision making. So they actually reduce the quality of risk um, of risk governance. So the first the first takeaway is kind of getting real around some of those concepts that are so commonplace that everyone does them, and um, to that to to which we say at populus, but, uh, you know, fallacy. Uh, just because everybody does that doesn't mean it's good, a and um, giving an alternative basically to what everybody's using, but it was never really meant to work. It was actually designed for something else, but it, it just kind of exploded, you know, went, went uh, viral in the world. So that's the first key takeaway, a reality check on some of the risk management practices and some of the, not just risk management practices, but some of the business practices, you know, the way businesses plan, forecast, budget, the way they make investments, the way they stress test, the way they do scenarios, a lot of those practices have been designed by theories ignoring uncertainty. So they're not risk-based by any stretch of imagination. And so the first takeaway that you will discover from the course is that many of the things that your business does, like the way you, you know, for example, the way your insurance programs are purchased, you would think that that, that is risk-based, but I can assure you it is not most of the time. And the same with procurement, like you expect your procurement team to select vendors that is risk-based as well as cost-based and performance-based. Um, but it, it, it's anything but risk-based quite often. And so the first takeaway is reality check. Um, the, the, second, uh, the second takeaway is uh, um, sharing kind of stories, arguments, and counter-arguments for um, shifting the, the, the people's the people minds and perceptions, because what you essentially are trying to do when you integrate uh, risk-based decision-making into any business process in an organization, you, you're trying to come into the head of strategy or head of procurement or head of finance or head of treasury. Uh, and you say, well, why don't we start doing what you have been doing for the last you know, God knows how many decades, but a little bit better. Why don't we add a little, little risk angle to what you have been doing all your career and <laughs> you think you have been doing this quite successfully? Why don't we start doing this through a risk lens? And that um, most of the time generates pushback. And sometimes it generates nothing but pushback. Sometimes it generates aggressive pushback. And so the second takeaway is building kind of this business case for the transition, um, building the business case for piloting this new risk-based thinking, this new risk-based approach in what the organization does. Because some departments, the, the, the senior leaders quite, quite quickly pick up the, the the kind of the new challenge. Let's let's see if we can make this better by make by switching to a risk based thinking. Uh, other departments find you know spend years and years finding excuses. And so I think in one of the modules and in the manual there's literally a section, you know, counter arguments for the most common excuses used <laughs> by uh, executives. And uh, as a board member, 
um, it's it's quite a challenge because you you want to suggest something and then you want to suggest it in a way that just doesn't get dismissed by you know a, a lot of um, very well structured, but nevertheless uh, excuses rather than uh, uh, actual facts. So I think the second um, the second takeaway is trying to build up this bag of ammunition for change, for the agents of change, which we, we hope the, the board members and the, the risk practitioners uh, will become. A and uh, I think the key takeaway is sharing a lot of a lot of stories of success, where somebody yeah. did mm -hmm. just that, what we discuss around the world, and they saved millions there, saved time there, um, got extra funding, justified a change, like they, they've, they've created a lot of positive change by introducing this small element of kind of risk-based thinking into some of the key decisions. So it's really kind of challenging the status quo, giving the ammunition for the change and supporting that with a lot of case studies where somebody has already done that successfully. And so you don't have to feel alone that this is the first, you, you, you're really not the first person or company trying to do that. That has been a lot of the ideas discussed in the program have been done many, many, many times um, before all over the world. So we have, you know, good case studies to to build our business case on. Well, and, it, and it's in a different program of ours than this one, um, but it echoes something you had just said in that there's a chief risk officer here in the United States um, who I was talking to, and she talked about this pushback and in fact, it was one time said, just don't get in their way when she was going to start implementing a program for somebody who was in a fairly successful business unit. And what she conveyed to people was these pilots, these ideas of having one program or testing a program with someone to show how it works are really effective. And the person who said to her, don't get in my way, became her biggest advocate to the other business units after going through that pilot program. Because when we're talking to people, we're really trying to tell them we can make you better at what you do. We're not trying to tell them this is what's wrong with what you're doing. And it's almost a, a framing uh, of this. And I think that's where the positive reaction has come uh, to the program from the people who've seen it so far. So we have the people who are working with boards. They might be the ones trying to make the case. Let's go into the board mindset. You know, a board is meeting just a few times a year um, or you know, in some cases more often, but they really have somewhat limited time to be thinking about how their risk management program is operating. But the program is called advanced risk governance. That's the, the board's role. How is it that a board is going to benefit or a board member is going to benefit from this program in terms of looking into management? Just looking in, not trying to intervene, but looking in and asking, are we doing this in a way that generates value? Well, I, th I think the kind of the overall premise uh, of the program is that risk management can be done for different purposes. But the purpose that really matters is um, improving the quality of decision making, improving the quality of planning, forecasting, budgeting, performance management, making it risk adjusted, making it fairer, more transparent, um, making it quantifiable. And, and I think the this main kind of message for the board members is, are you satisfied with the quality of decision making that you are facing as a board member? Are you satisfied with the information presented to you, for example, when you need to approve an investment project? Are you satisfied with various scenarios? Are you happy that the uncertainties associated with the fair value of that investment and the time to completion of that investment and the return on investment are actually uh, calculated appropriately? Are you sure that the management team have considered all the necessary risks? So the kind of the central premise of the course is decision quality. If um, if you want to be a board member at the board where you're comfortable with the quality of decision-making process and therefore you have more trust and more confidence in the decisions taken by the board and the decisions taken by the management, you want to look at the actual decision kind of making process, the quality of that uh, of that process and risk analysis, risk management plays a very fundamental role 
in that quality of decision making um decision making process and I, I think that that's kind of that's that that is one of the biggest motivators that if you want to build uh, to feel comfortable about the way you are making decisions as the board member then you should be comfortable in the way information is presented the alternatives are presented the alternatives are analyzed um the alternative um value versus risks are compared and how you're presented with this information and you you have the comfort that you are as the collective board choosing the most appropriate alternative given the risk appetite of the organization or the shareholders and this kind of risk reward trade off and and just you know maybe i'm asking too easy a question here but what you talk about it's not just particular to financial firms or energy firms, right? Or it's not particular to just one geography. Um, is it fair to argue that the lessons are applicable across all? Well, I, I certainly try to design it in that way. And in fact, um, my, my personal background is not financial services. It started um, in consulting, then in government investment and sovereign funds, than in chemical, logistical, transportation, and uh, energy companies. Uh, so it, the principles of risk-based decision-making and uh, the principles of decision quality and the principles of integrating the elements of risk management into the way how companies plan, budget, forecast, measure performance, and make decisions, um, it, I think are, are very, very universal. So Alex, people talk about quantitative and qualitative aspects of both risk management and risk governance. How does this program speak to those? Well, so I've uh, I've uh, um, put a lot of effort into into being as, as mild as possible on the shortcomings on a lot of known qualitative approaches. I kind of give hints here and there, and I certainly do. Um, uh, put a very large bibliography section uh, in each module. So if anybody's interested in kind of discovering why some of the qualitative approaches to risk management should really be avoided whenever possible, um, they certainly can find the information. But really uh, what I what I try to do is build the program around the case studies that have showed how quantitative risk analysis, even simple models, and we're we're not talking about sophisticated models. In fact, I'll I'll, I'll share a story in a second. Um, even the simplest models significantly outperform the kind of the best state of the art qualitative risk uh, risk approaches. And, and one of the interesting takeaways for me personally, because you know, I, I I was a a head of risk and insurance at a very large multinational company, um, what I've discovered is Whenever we, for example, started purchasing insurance, um, I started with very complex models because kind of my my in, you know, individual intellectual capacity wanted a challenge. And so we started building new models only to discover that the markets don't price in the complexity of the models. Even with basic models, we were able to save um, close to 13, well, that was actually slightly above, $13 million in just a single year. And that's coming back to this uh, notion that risk management really should pay for the, for itself. And you know, our risk management paid for the whole team and bonuses and salaries for, like, for the next 10 years. And uh, when we started, we realized that even the most basic models that we used uh, were uh, priced in by the market and were favorably priced in by the market in in our favor and so we actually scaled back quite significantly we realized that you know people talk about machine learning and artificial intelligence um well we we were able to save millions and millions with simple um regression models and um you know reg I'm, I'm oversimplifying it a bit and you you'll you'll have to yeah. you'll have to w watch the course for to find out the actual uh case studies that we did um but it, it's it, it's a very very um, a f fun challenge to kind of model at the speed of the market or model at the complexity level uh, of the market. But overall, I, I think the course has enough balance of the kind of qualitative aspects of risk management. And in fact, module five is dedicated to culture and making 
this risk management stick, which is a no small task by any means. Uh, but then inside, whenever we talk about actual case studies, we provide a lot of different global case studies on how different organizations actually use quantitative risk analysis to significantly outperform traditional risk management. And, and a couple of things in conclusion I want to emphasize about this is that and the emphasis is on practicality. This isn't, this isn't a theoretical exercise. You've got the work experience. You've got the practical case studies. So that we're not coming at this by saying, you know, here's a theory. We're talking about how this has actually worked in the past. And the other thing is, well, two other things. One, the lectures are very consumable. They are roughly 20, 25 minutes in length. And so there's something you can sit down with and, and, and take in whenever you have that time available. But there's significant takeaway material after every session. Um, you know, it's reading material, it's additional references, it's something as you talked about at one point in terms of giving people ammunition. But it's not just not just ammunition to make the case; it's ammunition to do the job. <laughs>